Eight Days to Redesign Your Destiny, Module 1, with Dr. Steve G. Jones. Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Florida, a master's degree in education from Armstrong Atlantic State University, and a doctorate in education from Georgia Southern University. I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist, a member of both the American Board of Hypnotherapy and the National Guild of Hypnotists, and I am president of the American Alliance of Hypnotists. I'm the director of the Steve G. Jones School of Clinical Hypnotherapy. I also serve on the board of directors of the American Lung Association in Los Angeles. I have over two decades of experience in hypnotherapy, and I still maintain a busy practice and teaching schedule because I see clients and teach classes worldwide. My client base consists mainly of people who want to lose weight, stop smoking, or gain confidence. Other clients include sales teams interested in boosting motivation and increasing income, also singles looking for love, insomniacs desiring proper sleep, and actors desiring more confidence for their next audition. When I travel to see clients and teach hypnotherapy certification classes around the world, I visit such places as Tokyo, Japan, Barcelona, Spain, Paris, France, London, England, Montreal, Canada, Los Angeles, California, and New York, just to name a few. By the way, since you have an interest in hypnosis, perhaps you'd be interested in becoming a certified clinical hypnotherapist. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com, and click on Hypnosis Classes at the top. You can either train in person or online. After your training, you'll be added to our worldwide directory of certified clinical hypnotherapists, and you'll receive a certificate. I was fortunate for many years to have my office in Beverly Hills, California, where I worked with such wonderful people as Tom Mankiewicz, the writer of Superman, Geraldine Saunders, the writer of The Love Boat, and many other celebrities. I have been interviewed on CNN, Fox News, and appeared on True TV, in addition to having my own hypnosis TV show. With my over 20 years of experience, I'm happy to share with you techniques that I've both developed and learned which can help you improve your life. I encourage you to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. There you will find my life's work, 22 books on hypnotherapy, over 3,000 hypnosis recordings available as downloadable MP3s or CDs, and these recordings will program your mind to achieve goals in such areas as weight loss, motivation, and stopping smoking. I also have audiobooks, such as this one, where I'm talking with you and sharing with you in a very dynamic way techniques that you can use to improve your life and the way you do things. The reason I'm telling you all of this is not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I, your teacher, am very capable and I know what I'm talking about. I'm also very happy for the opportunity to share this information with you, so rest assured that you're in good hands and let's have some fun as we now expand your knowledge. I wish you well in all of your endeavors and please be sure to visit my website betterlivingwithhypnosis.com Welcome to the program that's going to revolutionize your life. I'm going to take you through eight days, and you don't have to do the eight days in a row if you don't want to. You can do one day a week, but ideally you would just go day one, listen to module one, day two, listen to module two, and so forth, and that's going to build up the momentum that you need to get you to take action. Now, I understand if you need to spread them out over a few days or over a few weeks, you know, spaces between the modules, that's fine, but I want you to get through all of them because after listening to this program and taking action during it, you're going to find yourself in a whole new world, a different position. You're going to find yourself having redesigned your life. This is eight days to redesign your destiny. So what I'm talking about here is setting yourself up for a future of success. Now let's jump right in. This is module one on day one and it's called redesigning your destiny. Let's go ahead and start off right away. Now who is making your design? Let's take a look at that. Most people don't realize the control they have over their own lives. They allow others to dictate their future based on distorted beliefs and views. Now you don't have to be the kind of person who buys into this. I want you to choose to take control. So who is making the design? Well, you should be, and by the end of this program, you will be. The only thing holding you back from redesigning your destiny is, you got it, you. 
Make the decision today to take control of your direction and prepare to start making the choices that are going to enhance your life. Now, I remember a time in my life when I wasn't really in control of my destiny. At least I didn't think so. It was a time when I was just starting college and I had left my home where I was raised and I had moved to Gainesville, Florida. And I was just starting college. I had my own apartment. I was living off campus and I was calling my parents every week. And every week I would check in with them. Now, the interesting thing about the way I was raised is that my grades were always very important. My parents were always very interested in my education. And in fifth grade, I remember, for example, I had to keep a journal. No other students had to do this, but I had to keep a journal that consisted of a little notebook that my parents gave me that I would have to have my homeroom teacher, the teacher who is the sort of organizing teacher for all of the classes, she would have to write how I was doing every week. And I would have to bring that back to my parents. And then there was a way that they could check to make sure that they were seeing each other's notes properly. They had to sign off on the journal to make sure I wasn't uh, just hiding the journal and make sure that they were reading everything in the journal. And so it was very uh, regimented. And this actually helped me improve my grades quite a bit, but it kind of put me under a lot of control. And so when I got to college, I was calling my parents once a week and kind of doing the same thing, uh, just reporting in on how I was doing in my grades. And it was after, a, I guess, a couple months of this that I decided, wait a minute now, I'm an adult, I'm in college, uh, this doesn't have to be this way. So my parents had the best intentions for me. Of course, it was my father and my stepmother. My mom passed away early on, but they had the best intentions for me with this checking in process. But I started to realize that I wasn't really in charge of my destiny. I had to break free of that. So in order to be polite about it and to honor what they were attempting to do, which was just help me academically, I said, here's what we're going to do. I'm not going to have any more support uh, from you financially because they're also financially supporting me. And I felt that that was what gave them the ability to check in on me, sort of like an investment. You know, if you're paying for something, you should be able to check up on it and see how it's doing. So I told them that I don't want any more support financially. I don't want any more uh, checking in going on. So I'm going to, from this point forward, handle things on my own. And that's what I did. Well, I want to tell you that created a bit of a rocky road for me. It was quite a few years later that I graduated because uh, working took up a lot of my time from that point forward. But I sort of, if you want to look at it this way, I sort of purchased my freedom. But I want to tell you that that made all the difference for me because that allowed me to stand on my own feet and make my own decisions and free myself from the control that they were exerting over me. Now, keep in mind, this control was done in a loving way, and they certainly didn't mean to smother me. They didn't mean to make me feel like some sort of prisoner, but that was the effect it was having for me personally. And so I had to free myself of this. And once I did that, I felt two things. Number one, a lot of fear. I didn't know what was going to happen. And number two, I felt a lot of freedom. But that move made a big difference for me because I really don't think that I would have built the financial uh, empire, if you want to look at it that way, that I have if if I hadn't made that step, if I hadn't freed myself of that and started doing things my way because the constant control and the input I was getting and the decisions that I wasn't allowed to make on my own because if I did, then I wouldn't have their financial support anymore. All of that was really causing my life to go into a direction that I didn't want it to go. So I had to take charge of that and control my destiny. And what I want you to see from this is that I was making a decision in that moment that affected my future. That affected my destiny. I would have turned out to be a product uh, very controlled by what they wanted me to do. For example, my idea was to major in psychology when I started college. And when you start college, the first couple years, which I broke free in the first couple months, but the first couple years are involved with the idea of getting core requirements. You take a wide variety of courses without even choosing a major. So I wasn't even allowed to choose a major in college according to their rules, college rules, for the first couple years. You just take general distribution classes, as they're called. So, you know, biology, philosophy, humanities, math, reading, so forth, just general classes. But there was a strong pressure during that time from my parents to major in business and minor in computers. Now, at that time in the 80s, computers, that was a legitimate minor. You could minor in computers. Now it's very specified. There's a robust field of 
information that's subdivided into many different branches. But at that time, it made sense to major in business and minor in computers. Well, I didn't think that made sense for me because my interest was psychology, and that has made all of the difference me sticking to my wishes and moving in my direction. So I would have had a severe influence from them on my destiny had I continued on that route. And I saw that I was able to make that change. Now that was early on in college when I just started out. And so I was lucky to be able to take control at that point. But think about your current destiny. Take a look at every aspect of your life and ask yourself the tough questions. Have you been allowing others to hold you back from living your dreams? Have you allowed negative thoughts, beliefs, and feelings to hinder your success? If things continue down this path, will it lead to a destiny worth achieving? And you can use your answers to target the issues that are holding you back from your destiny. So your homework is to look at that, to ask yourself those questions and to see if there is a change in direction that you need to make. You have the capability to become your own destiny designer. You can be anything you want to be and do anything you want to do. And so you've got to become comfortable with that. I want you to let go of fear and doubt and learn to embrace your own destiny design because deep down you already know what you truly want. And all you have to do is learn that with faith you will succeed. And I'm talking about faith in yourself. Now, as I mentioned, when I realized as a young adult that I had control over my own destiny, it made me feel two things. Number one, scared. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm not a child anymore. I can take charge of this stuff, but it's scary to think that there's no one to blame except me if this doesn't work out. And it made me feel free. It made me feel wonderful and good about myself and more empowered. So that's what happens. Those are the types of emotions you're going to deal with when you start to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to look around here and decide what I want to do. Oh, okay, that's what I want to do. Now I'm going to do that. And once you do that, it's a little scary because you're out on your own and you realize that if it doesn't work out, which of course it will because you'll eventually get to where you need to be, but that's what you feel initially, that if it doesn't work out, oh my goodness, I've got no one to blame but me, and, and I'm going to have to hear all the I told you so's. But what you need to realize is that that is part of doing something different. That's part of becoming who you are. And when you become who you are, you become instantly fulfilled. So you get this dual set of emotions going on at the same time, fear and a sense of fulfillment already. So here's how to define your purpose and create your design. First, you must discover your passions and your interests. Second, you have to eliminate excuses from your thoughts and feelings. You have to let them go. I had plenty of excuses then. Well, if I stop the gravy train, if you will, if I stop the support flow for my parents, well, that's not good. I'm going to have to fend for myself, so I'll just do what they say. That's an excuse, and I had to eliminate that from my thoughts and feelings. Also, imagine what you want your entire life to be like. Are you on a trajectory? Is the train of your life heading down the tracks that are going to take you to where you want to be? You've got to look ahead and see if that's what you really want. And you have to get it all down on paper and create a timeline for your new design. So this is your homework. Yes, you've got a lot of homework. I have given you plenty to do in just a short period of time. You, for your homework, just to recap here, need to look at every aspect of your life and ask yourself the tough questions. Again, the tough questions are, have you been allowing others to hold you back from living your dreams? And have you allowed negative thoughts, beliefs, and feelings to hinder your success? And ask yourself, if things continue down this path, will it lead to a destiny worth achieving? And after you do that, just to recap again, what I want you to do for the next step is discover your passions and interests. Now, how do you do that? You may think, well, that's much more easily said than done, Steve. But what I want you to do is just do some soul searching. Just take some time for yourself. Just think about thoughts that tend to come up in your mind over and over. Maybe a fantasy about your fantasy life. What is that? Do you think it's out of your reach? Do you think it's impossible? Do you think people will laugh? Do you think it's silly? Is it something that really drives you? If it's something that really drives you and catches your interest, then I want to tell you it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about it. That's your passion. Then your homework is to eliminate excuses from your thoughts and feelings. Think about all the excuses you've come up with for not following that. And then imagine what you want your entire life to be like. Now realize that once you start following your passion, it's going to lead to other things. It's going to open other doors. It's not as if you're going to stick with that all of your life. You may, but it may lead to other things. But do you want that to be part of your life? Do you want that to be a stepping stone? And potentially, do you want to continue that for the rest of your life? That thing that is your passion. So think about it. Think it through. Is this something you can really get into for at least a while? And most importantly for your homework, I want you to get it all on paper. 
and create a timeline for your new design. If this is your new design, if this is your new trajectory, if this is your new direction, put it on a timeline. When are you going to do things? And the way I find it most easy to do is to think about the ultimate goal. What is the ultimate goal? Let's say, for example, your ultimate goal is to be a well-known writer. Okay, well, you put that on the timeline, put that out about a year or however long you think is reasonable for you to become a well-known writer. And then back it up. What are the steps that would lead up to that? Well, right before that, you probably would have written your second book, at least. Before that, you would have written your first book. But in between those two, you would have prepared to write those books. And backing it all the way up to now, you would start getting ideas together for your first book. So when you look at it forward, you see yourself getting ideas together for your first book, writing your first book after having created an outline, and in the meantime, finding a publisher or maybe self-publishing in the meantime and then getting ideas together for your second book and writing your second book. Now, your timeline may be different. Maybe it takes two years to do this in your mind, but that doesn't matter. Your timeline is your timeline, and however long it takes is however long it takes. But that's what I want you to do. Just create a timeline. The easiest way to do this is with as little thought as possible. Just put it down. Allow your passion to write it down. The details will come later. So that's your homework. Let go of the idea of making it challenging. Just do it. Just start writing, start creating, and then join me in the next module. Because in module two, we're going to talk about using the law of attraction to redesign your destiny. I'm Dr. Steve G. Jones, hoping you have an outstanding day.